There you go. Okay, well, we're continuing working our way through the planets, and we're going to focus on Neptune this week, some Neptune and some Pluto. Uh, just for an overview, um, when you uh, we read the constants, uh, the Church of Light constants from the 20th century work from Sane, you'll often see um, them say, well, these are the constants, and an upper octave planet such as Neptune or Pluto or Uranus, or sometimes Neptune or Pluto. You see that frequently, Neptune or Pluto. And um, so I thought for, I was looking at uh, focusing on Neptune conditions uh, for this week. And um, I thought for each of them, I would look at Pluto also. And for a number of the conditions, it's not Neptune or Pluto, it's Neptune and Pluto, right? And uh, uh, specifically, people who are poisoned, right? There's Neptune and Pluto. Uh, Lyme disease, we have Neptune and Pluto. And uh, we have some, some other ones here. We'll go over them uh, this evening. Uh, the, uh, yes, poisoning, drug overdoses. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it, it appears to be both of them. And we're, we're, so we're really we're getting into the upper octave now and we're seeing they sometimes come together and where uh, Pluto uh, where I was seeing Pluto in what I expected to be a Neptune condition I also tested well lots of people have a Pluto you know <laughs> somewhere and in uh, for these charts in each case the Pluto also had an aerial into the first house right the body so the, uh, the Pluto either aspected the ascendant or a planet in the first house or the planet that ruled the first house. So, um, and for most of these, it's a series of 10. So that's not like, you know, that's not random. By the time you get 10 charts in a row where there's a, a you know, the Pluto uh, aspects into the first house. So with that's the introduction. So let's look at it. Here is, um, uh, oh, I need to share the screen first, of course. Yeah, just a minute. How are we going to do this? Um, too many screens. Okay. Slideshow. There it is. So now I lose the. Okay, just a minute. Our meeting controls. Okay. Let's see. Now I can share the screen. And somebody hold your thumb up if you can see the slide. Great. So uh, here we go. This is our 11th class. We'll have one more class. I guess it's appropriate to have 12 classes for your uh, astrology class. Here is, um, we'll start with a, the basic uh, overview of Neptune. Um, uh, Neptune, uh, this is from the Church of Light material. Uh, I, a rulership, uh, according to Zane, it influences the pineal gland, it would be the highest gland in the body, and the nervous system. Um, Do you want to put the slide for that, please? Is it not up there? I see. Okay, just a minute. Thank you. Um, oh boy, how am I going to do this? Where are we? Here we go. Okay, now, all right. Here we are. Um, you got it, thank you. Yeah, Zane uh, says pineal gland and the nervous system. And uh, we have to say, well, Mercury rules the nervous system, right? And what is the connection there? Uh, the uh, nervous system has uh, can have a sensitivity to it. Uh, and this would be the kind of the, 
the the psychic side of the nervous system that, that detects uh, subtle vibrations and uh, maybe transmits subtle vibrations. Um, it's uh, subtle, impressionable, psychic, visionary. Um, okay, the weather is cool, wet, and still, so you would expect um, uh, the uh, conditions, medical conditions, where a zone was affected by that, that that could be the energy happening in that area. Uh, we have uh, daydreaming, idealism, fantasy, when discordant, uh, unrealistic or unrealizable plans. Um, that uh, this this can affect mental health. This can be involved in delusional mental disorders uh, and so on. The unrealistic thinking. Uh, so there. So there is a pathology. It tends to negativeness. Uh, this is overly receptive, right? You're taking in impressions too easily. Um, uh, uh, so this can uh, psychically, person can have poor psychic boundaries and they take on a lot of stuff. The person <laughs> takes a trip across town on the bus and picks up a bunch of people's issues on the way. <laughs> on the other side of town, they have some new problems. And uh, the, uh, uh, But uh, also uh, this is on the medical aspect, this is lowered host resistance, weakened host resistance. Uh, here, Zane says, depresses the action of, action of cortin. We call this cortisol today. That's the old, old term there. Um, and, uh, but here, uh, these are uh, poisoning. That's what we're going to examine this. Pus formation. This is pus formation in like pockets of pus, right? Things that make a pocket of pus. We're going to look at abscess, uh, one of those, uh, 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 an infection that you can't fight off and it fills up with pus and it causes blood poisoning. Is an abscess, uh, wasting diseases, uh, perversions. I'm not going to explore that. <laughs> and uh, there was a certain idea of that in the 1940s that uh, that uh, we don't think of uh, today. And um, the uh, addictions. Okay, this has to do with, uh, and then obsessions. Uh, these all have to do with being rendered helpless, right? Being rendered powerless. Right, either powerless in the face of an of a of a of a of an infection, powerless over a craving for a drug or alcohol, um, and there and also uh, ultimately Neptune uh, is involved with suicide, um, Neptune and the twelfth house. Also, comatose conditions. This is where a person's in a coma. Honk, right, unconscious, right. That is a, a, a Neptune. Um, uh, environmental sensitivity this is what in the modern world we see this all the time in our clinics as people come in they call it multiple chemical sensitivity or uh, people end up being diagnosed with any number of things they'll say oh well you have candida or you have mold sensitivity or you have whatever and but this is very common in the modern world people are so depleted that their boundaries are weakened and this would be uh all kinds of things come in uh, there. They're exhausted all the time. They get frequent infections. They also get psychic impressions. They, and I ha I'm sorry to say in alternative medicine field, they often become victimized by um, alternative practitioners with their own pet theories that cost a lot of money that don't have any scientific basis. So um, the, uh, okay. And then uh, therapeutic spiritual healing. Uh, I would add to this, uh, the uh, surgical anesthesia, the, the anesthetist would be the sand man, right? Who comes and puts you to sleep or the sand woman it would be anesthesia. And um, I, I retract my uh, uh, statement about aromatherapy. <laughs> when uh, aromatherapy, uh, as it's practiced, you have these concentrated essential oils, right? And there's like if you get a, a bottle of rosemary oil in the in the health food store, right? That's concentrated 50 times, right? That that's like a pharmaceutical drug, right? And if you even sniff that, you know, people say, Oh, I'm just sniffing it. It it goes, it affects the nerves in my nose and my brain. No, it's not sniffing marijuana, right? It goes down into your lungs, goes straight into your bloodstream. Do not pass the liver, do not pay two hundred dollars, <laughs> go directly to jail, right? It's like taking a drug, sniffing in a, a concentrated oil. So 
the, the aromatherapy that would be ruled by Neptune is actual medical aromatherapy redilutes the essential oil out 50 times, right? It's one of the, one of the standard basic things of aromatherapy as it's practiced by professionals is never use an undiluted essential oil, right? And so today we have uh, uh, various essential oil cults that are that multi-level marketing things that are telling people to take them, take a lot of them, take them all the time, take them undiluted, put them on your skin undiluted. Uh, you know, 6% of any un unconcentrate, uh, concentrated essential oil you put on your skin ends up in your bloodstream, right? <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, uh, so anyway, the subtle side, the Neptunian side of aromatherapy is when they're re-diluted back out to about the same concentration they would be in a flower if you sniff the flower ah right so this would be that would be a neptunian kind of um, of therapy there. okay um antidote the, it requires the that passivity it requires the positivity of the sun okay and also the practicality and discipline of saturn are useful as antidotes for that and this can um uh, this is uh, in natural medicine. We talk about all the time about vitality, raising the vitality, preventing leakages of the vitality. People have certain habits that drain their, drain their, their vitality, and, uh, like not, not getting enough sleep or, or uh, exercising to exhaustion and things like that. So, and then, uh, okay. And then uh, Saturn uh, is a discipline uh, usually some sort of people who are hypersensitive with Neptune or have Neptunian kind of things like that need to follow a certain discipline. Usually they'll need to follow a diet fairly strictly in order to counter the negativity there in order to overcome of that. And now I'm not talking about cal call it losing weight calories diet. I'm talking about a, a positive diet, like getting in a good pro breakfast and a protein, right? avoiding things that give you heartburn, right? And so it takes some discipline uh, in order to prevent these leakages of the vitality that are, that are common with this. Okay. Uh, here, I'm, I'm going to revisit this. We did talk about alcoholism before, and uh, I believe we did uh, David Carradine's chart. Um, this is our, um, this is our, from our, our course, I'm, I'm sorry, what happened here? From our course, we say a prominent and usually heavily affected Mars, okay? An aspect of Mars to the moon increases the predisposition. Uh, those who have become habitual drunkards usually also have a prominent and usually afflicted Neptune. Um, I have, I have to say, I have um, one chart of uh, someone who once had severe alcoholism, blacked out drunk, uh, barely survived uh, his 20s. And that person's name was Paul Bergner. I've been, <laughs> been sober 50 years now. But, um, and I don't have a prominent or heavily affected Neptune. I, my Neptune has absolutely only harmonious aspects to it. So uh, this, and uh, I drank for 10 years like that. So. Uh, this I have one chart where this wasn't there. <laughs> um, I have seven charts, a uh, series of seven charts of individuals with alcoholism. Um, one of the things with alcoholism is, uh, oh, it was that person, uh, they drank to intoxication a lot, or did they really, really have an addiction to alcohol, right? Where they completely di disabled by alcohol. Uh, you would want the person to be rendered helpless uh, by their alcohol addiction in order for Neptune to be there. Um, I was for that period of time. Uh, but uh, so anyway, the series of seven charts, uh, each had a prominent and afflicted Mars and Neptune uh, here, as predicted here, the Mars, but also Neptune, each of these seven. Uh, six of the seven had an aspect of Mars to Neptune, right, in this. So for future research in this area, people want to add more numbers of charts to this. This is only seven charts. This is something to, to look at, but this also says something about this, this, this combination, Mars and Neptune. Uh, the, these two planets are just really incompatible. Like the, the one is so aggressive, right? And the other is so uh, passive and weak, right? So uh, that's, a, 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 that's a, a difficult combination there. Um, 
the seventh one had an aspect of Saturn to Neptune. <laughs> so uh, here you would have the receptivity of Neptune and the negativity of Saturn is the two of those. That that's, that's, doesn't sound like anybody's good idea. Um, that was likely to cause a, a discord. So, and then four, only four of them had aspects of Mars to the moon, four of the seven. But um, so that didn't end up uh, being prominent in that series. But we have to consider why alcoholism, why Neptune is Neptune puts the person in a state of helplessness, uh, uh, of control, or puts the person in, a, in unconscious, right? So, uh, okay. Oh, here we are. Oh, well, that's the same thing I had. There we go. Okay. Uh, we talked about this before when we talked about pneumonia. Uh, uh, when, you know why Neptune and pneumonia? Uh, pneumonia is is isn't is usually a disease characterized by weak host resistance. Uh, people with uh, weak host resistance get get uh, pneumonia. It's more common in people as they get older. There's a certain kind of, of pneumonia that alcoholics get. Um, the chronic drinking, you know, we, we think of alcohol damaging the liver. Alcohol also damages the lung in uh, the same way, you know, not the same way, but as it damages the liver, it also damages the lung, your other or organs also. So there's a pneumonia characteristic of, of uh, heavy drinkers. And um, so there, there's a weakness there. Uh, oftentimes a, a pneumonia will... Uh, start with an upper infection in the upper and then it'll come down to the that'll come down into the into the bronchial tract and then and then the person can get even if that's a viral infection they end up getting a secondary bacterial overgrowth in the lungs and they get bacterial pneumonia you hear about the you know the 1918 influenza they say people died of of influenza people they um went back and got biopsies, right? The majority of people died of bacterial pneumonia after their system was weakened by the viral influenza uh, infection there. So this is, this is why Neptune and pneumonia. This is relevant to COVID, right? Because, you know, most people, 20% of people get COVID and never knew it, right? They have antibodies to it. You know, another 20% get very mild, 20 or 30% get mild disease. And uh, it can have to do with stronger or weaker uh, host resistance. And, um, but uh, some people, especially people who are, who are older, the, uh, their resistance is running down as people get older and they're much more vulnerable to COVID pneumonia. That's typically how people die. The, the COVID infection gets into the lungs. Now they have COVID pneumonia and, and, uh, and that can be deadly. Um, so, uh, here I did, I had, uh, initially I had eight charts of individuals with pneumonia. And this was from my original 100 chart collection I did. They, they all had a prominent Neptune and all the Neptunes had discordines present to them. Um, I, I uh, yeah, I, I, I did not calculate uh, the time of the disease and the progressions to that, for that. On this one, uh, a series of 15 charts, these were patients specifically with COVID-19 pneumonia, and they all had prominent and discordant natal Neptune. Um, these all also had a progression uh, to Neptune, uh, to that Neptune, okay. Uh, in this, the other, uh, disc, uh, the other constants in the pneumonia cases were natal discords and progressions to a planet in Cancer or the Moon, and also a planet in Gemini or Mercury. They had both. And remember, the we have the of the lung. The upper lung is ruled by Gemini and Mercury. The lower lung is ruled by the lower lobe of the lung is ruled by Cancer and the Moon. Um, okay. So uh, there. This is why Neptune and pneumonia. Pneumonia is a disease of weak host resistance. Usually, it isn't like an aggressive bacteria. Uh, uh, comes and infects you and gets in your lungs and invades you, uh, except with COVID, <laughs> it is, right? It's an aggressive virus, can go right down into your lung tissue for that, so, okay. Now, we did seizures uh, last week uh, and showed the relationship of Uranus to seizures. Seizure is the, it's a, uh, the, the seizure disorder is very sudden, it's unexpected, it's like a lightning strike, right? 
and then it's spasmodic, right? Which is, uh, that's uh, Uranus is spasmodic, so we expect that. But then also typically the person with seizures becomes unconscious, right? For a period of time. And uh, so uh, we did have, uh, took a, a series of, of 13 charts. Um, patients had epilepsy or seizure disorder, okay? All patients had a prominent natal Neptune with discordines. Okay. The other constants were Mercury, Aries or its ruler Mars. Uh, they had Mercury. Then they also had Aries or its ruler Mars and Uranus. These were the other constants. Um, 11 of, I went back and looked at this since we talked about it before. 11 of those charts had a prominent Saturn. Um, and they all had discordines to Saturn. Um, when I, the way I, th I, I wasn't thinking Saturn and seizures, but I just seemed to noticing, I was looking at all the aspects that the planets were making. It seems like a lot of these are aspecting Saturn. So I went and re-examined them to see if Saturn was a, a, uh, uh, was a constant there. And I have to say in two, two of the 13 charts, it, it wasn't prominent by, by our rules of prominence, right? So, and uh, so here, uh, yeah, Neptune is indicated here because seizures typically involve a state of coma or unconsciousness. Okay. Here is, uh, this is poisoning. Uh, we know our, we uh, have in our, our lessons, we have Neptune as a constant in poisoning. Uh, typically uh, Mars and Neptune. And um, so uh, I thought to investigate Mars and Neptune as constants, and then also examine Pluto, okay? And to see if that could be involved in, in poisoning. And I got, I got a nice mix of different causes of poisoning here, which is great for research. Um, the causes of poisoning included accidental. Um, the one was a, 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 a woman was having a love affair and her love affair tried to poison her husband, right? But the little girl, took a spoonful of the medicine instead and the daughter died, right? So gruesome tale, but so the little, the little girl, that was accidental, right? Okay. Um, murder by coerced suicide. This was General Rommel, the Nazi, uh, I mean, the German uh, general who uh, joined the plot to assassinate Hitler. And uh, when they, uh, they found it out, he was a national hero. So they didn't want to uh, publicized what he had done, so they offered to let him take poison, and they wouldn't kill his family. <laughs> so uh, he he took poison. I call that murder by coercion, uh, and uh, uh, so he took that. We have alcohol poisoning. Uh, one of the movie stars uh, drank herself unconscious and uh, uh, went to the hospital and was about as poisoned as you can be without dying of, of alcohol. Um, uh, you all know, of course, that young people die of alcohol poisoning every year. They, they drink too much and your blood alcohol hits 35 or 40 percent and yet you um, you anesthetize yourself to death and uh, that's that's the end of it so and then accidental drug overdoses now i found a lot of drug overdoses but i was careful to screen out the ones that look like suicide because i'm trying to separate right the issue of poisoning from the issue of self-murder right and uh, so uh, these were accidental drug ruled accidental uh, not suicide then there were two cases of carbon monoxide poisoning um, and one of salmonella poisoning, right? And uh, that's, uh, so that's a pretty good mix. And it's really, regardless of the cause, they all had the same constants, right? And they, they were really quite distinct. Um, and in each of these, Mars, Neptune, and Pluto, they were all natally prominent and discorded. They were all active by progression when the time of the poisoning was known. Um, and this is the one, because Pluto's added to this. This isn't in our tradition that Pluto's there. So I thought to investigate a little deeper. And in these, each case, Pluto also had an aspect to the ascendant, a planet in the first house or a ruler in the ascendant. So um, this is uh, in medical astrology. This is, well, the first house is the body, right? And uh, you'll see it sometimes. People see this discordant aspect that you expect something might happen, but there's no, it doesn't have any weight of the body, right? So there, um, 
and I don't know much more to say than that. I'm sort of exploring this as a possible constant in a number of the things I'm looking at here. Uh, we can do uh, an example. I, uh, here we are. I did, uh, oh, wait a minute. I want Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, the, the actor, had an accidental um, uh, overdose. He was on, it was prescription medication uh, for pain. And uh, he, um, I, I, at the last minute, I went to put his chart up here and the chart disappeared from my computer. So I don't know, I, I couldn't find it. So, but I have the notes on it. Uh, and here you have, uh, for, for each, each of these planets, I first look for, uh, when you see, see my notes here, I look for prominence, like aspects to Sun, Moon, or Mercury, or whether they're angular or not. And here, Mars is conjunct Mercury. It's very close, within two degrees. It's a degree and a half away. Um, Mars, and then its other aspects are trying Jupiter and Uranus. Okay, so... This is the prominent and discordant. Mars conjunct Mercury takes the discord of Mars into the uh, nervous system. The uh, okay, the progressions uh, progressed. Sun was semi square to the Mars Mercury conjunction. In other words, to both planets. Okay, and progressed Mars quinquix Uranus in the eighth <laughs> sudden unexpected death. Okay, and uh, progressed Mars was trying to Neptune there also. So we see, see our constants, Mars, Neptune, and this is all so far with Mars. Neptune uh, is prominent because it's trying to the sun, square to Mercury, okay? Aspects both of those. Um, it is, uh, this is the discord, uh, Neptune square to Mercury is the, disco is the discord in the Neptune. Um, the progression progressed Mars, trine Neptune, Neptune, both Neptunes, and uh, <laughs> are, are <laughs> it sounds like somebody's going to sleep, um, are semi, uh, se semi square Uranus uh, in the eighth on there. Okay. And then finally, we're looking at Pluto. Pluto is angular in the seventh, the prominence by angularity. It's opposite the sun and square the moon. It's prominence by aspecting the lights. So this is a very prominent planet there, angular and aspecting the sun and the moon. Uh, did I? Yeah, I went backwards here. Wait a minute. Progressed, uh, uh, yeah, progressed, progressed Mercury in the first is opposite to Pluto on there. So we have a Mercury progressions are often triggers of major events. Um, they uh, facilitate the... The, the release of, uh, of that energy. So this is also, um, here we have, you know, the Pluto's angular in the seventh. So this is the, the aerial of Pluto into the first house is this opposition to Mercury in the first house in this particular chart. Um, I thought I would do one more uh, that demonstrates the, the power of Pluto in that particular case. Here, I'll do another poisoning. And this one is um, salmonella poisoning. And uh, I can, I, I can I, here, I, I haven't figured out a way to demonstrate on here the chart and the notes on the chart. <laughs> I have to flip back and forth. So uh, let's, uh, we can look here. Uh, this this uh, guy is, um, he has, um, let's just review the notes. Mars is angular in the 10th, prominent. Sesca quadrate the moon, okay, prominent. Okay, it's square to Jupiter, conjunct the midheaven. Okay, and uh, okay, the uh, the progressed sun is semi square Mars. Are progressed Mars is quinquix to Pluto. Okay. So we have Mars is prominent, discordant, we have a discordant, sesca quadrate, moon square Jupiter, and acted by progression. Right, multiple progressions triggering it. Okay. We, I think maybe we could we could do it this way, and we could look at the Mars here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I can do this here. Just a minute. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
I have to, I have to keep flipping back and forth. It's the only way to do it. Mars angular in the 10th. Cisco quadrate the moon is here. Okay. And uh, well, uh, this isn't going to work to flip back and forth uh, constantly there. Let's let's take one of them and look at them here. Let's take let's look at Pluto here. In this particular case, uh, so this is a salmonella poisoning, but we have Pluto. Uh, <laughs> it's in the seventh house. It makes us wonder if this guy was a chef or something. You know, and a, a rival chef put some <laughs> put some salmonella in his soup. Right? <laughs> you wonder if this wasn't an enemy with Pluto in the seventh house there, but uh, it's just an astrologer's joke there. And uh, but this is there's a big Pluto opposite Saturn across the angles here. Okay, this is the body, right? So this is a uh, there's a yeah there's gonna be something going on there. And uh, the other things for Pluto were um, uh, uh, it's it's trying the Moon sextile Mercury. Oh, square Uranus. Yeah, that's right. So it's a square to Uranus down here. This is a T square. It doesn't look at the way the chart is spread out. And then there's a sesqu quadrate up here to um, uh, an aggravator, as we've been talking about. Put the sesqu quadrate to Neptune in the midheaven. Uh, Pluto. Uh, that is a, a semi-square. Okay. I am. Um, I'm going to have to hone my presentation skills here. This isn't working out very well. Um, Paul. Yes. Uh, I found on Google that how to share two documents in Zoom. Yeah. I'd like to tell you about it. Yeah. When you click and select one of the applications to share, a message will pop up saying "Hold Control." to select multiple windows. Oh, really? Hold the control key and select another window and then click share. You can share more windows than two. Well, I'll be darned. How will I do this? Um, so I don't know if you can share two slides from your PowerPoint. <laughs> you can't get them into two different windows. Uh, well, Let's I said here. two documents. There you go. I might be. Oh, right. They'd have to be separate documents, I think. Yeah. I'm going to have to go forward uh, here. And uh, uh, if we have some time, we can come back to it. The, the point here I want to make is that Pluto in each of these charts, Pluto was very distinctly prominent, very distinctly discordant, <laughs> and acted by progression and making an aerial to the first house. And th so this was with um, uh, these cases of poisoning. And it seemed regardless of the kind of poisoning uh, it was. So this says something about the nature of um, uh, poisoning and Neptune. And uh, it's I'm beginning to really, uh, we don't have a lot of information on Pluto and health, right? Other than its rulership of Scorpio, right? And the, for the Scorpio region. And uh, the things I'm, I'm c considering in research is, we call it the microbiome, right? This is the mass of bacteria in you and on you. And then it turns out that microbiome, like in your gut, that has the same functions as an organ, like your liver or your kidney or things like that. And so this would be a huge cooperative community of bacteria ruled by Pluto, I do believe, right? And the other thing is we know you have the immune system, you have antibodies, you have white blood cells over here, you have chemicals called cytokines, right? You have bone marrow making things. And what is the overall thing that coordinates all of that into a unity, right? Is I believe that the coordination of the immune system probably comes under Pluto. So the diseases will have to do with discoordination of the immune system, overwhelm of the immune system, or, yeah, okay. This is what we're exploring here. So um, I have, uh, uh, in, in that case, so poisoning there, we would have 
Uh, oh, also, uh, Pluto is is drastic, right? Pluto is drastic in its effects. Um, I once did a did a uh, uh, it's, it's kind of grisly, but I was trying to prove that Pluto was a planet <laughs> after they said it wasn't a planet anymore. And I had been reading a history of the Mongols and <laughs> the Mongols used to come into a town and just like kill everybody, right? Or kill everybody but 10 people and send them on to the next village to, to tell them to surrender without a fight, right? And it's pretty gruesome, but that's Pluto. <laughs> that's Plutonian, right? That is drastic. Uh, and uh, I had a, a, a weather chart, a town here in Oregon was destroyed by a flood. This was the city, it was the second largest city in Oregon. And it was destroyed in 30 minutes by a flood and it never came back. It was wiped off the face of the earth in 30 minutes. And the weather indications, Pluto, right? It's like drastic. So, and uh, it's like affects everything, right? So uh, Plutonian forces affect all members of the society, right? So uh, I think the Pluto, this idea, why poisoning, right? Well, you know, Neptune is the susceptibility, you're rendered weak by the poison, but then Pluto is the, it's drastic, it affects everything, right? It's not just a local problem, it affects every cell in your body when you do that. So um, this is sort of what I'm, what I'm uh, uh, examining and uh, playing with here. We did, okay, so that's poisoning. Um, I thought to do uh, Lyme disease. Uh, the reason is uh, we have in our lesson tick fever, right? Now, there's not just one tick fever. As we know now there are many organisms in tick that you can give them and they give you different varieties of fever. <laughs> you can get uh, Rocky Mountain spider fever and you can get one kind of tick fever. And these days, the big one these days is Lyme disease, right? And so uh, uh, Zane had um, Mars and Neptune as constants for tick fever. And uh, here uh, the Mars would be in this case, the Mars would be the bite or the infection, right? And also the fever, right? So we, we, we're looking for Mars there. Uh, this is also um, true of Lyme disease. People get the bite, they get an infection, they get an, an inflammation, usually not always around the bite and uh, they um, can get a fever and then all kinds of chronic problems uh, if it isn't handled promptly and, and properly. So, um, uh, here, uh, uh, so uh, I, I'm looking at for Neptune, uh, Neptune and Mars, because our lesson starts with Mars and Neptune for tick fever, and then uh, I'm considering also Pluto there because it is such a devastating system-wide um, uh, chronic uh, infection that can uh, uh, yeah harm people. So I only found five charts, right, of people with Lyme disease. I'm sure I could collect a whole lot more than that, but these were in the Astro Data Bank. And uh, we have uh, here uh, the five charts, okay, and their history. They were examined, okay. All the charts had Mars, Neptune, and Pluto prominent and afflicted in the natal chart. I didn't have onset for any of these. Right? So I don't have progressions. All charts also had an aspect from Pluto to the ascendant planet in the first house or ruler of the ascendant. Okay. And I just noticed as I was doing this, wow, I'm writing Saturn a whole lot here as I'm <laughs> writing these things down. And I said, it turned out all the charts, one or more of the, these constants, Mars, Neptune, or Pluto, made a discordant aspect to Saturn. Right. And uh, I said, uh, in Every chart, Mars made a discordant aspect to Saturn. Now, I only have five samples. We can't call it a constant yet, right? But uh, that's what uh, we would, should, might look for in research. Four of the five charts, Pluto made a discordant aspect to Saturn. Three of the five charts, Neptune made a discordant aspect to Saturn. And um, I do have a, um, I do have a uh, something I can, I can show you here that. Uh, might be of interest here. Where are we? Uh, hmm. I had it pulled up so I could just show it. Here it is. And uh, I will, I think I can 
I think I can do this. Are you seeing a spreadsheet go onto your screen? Yes, we're seeing yeah. the spreadsheet. Yes, there. So these, these were the five uh, Lyme disease, uh, right? And here were the aspects uh, to Mars, Neptune, and Pluto. Uh, like I said, I don't have progressions. I didn't have dates of onset. But I thought, I said, you know, I'm writing Saturn a whole lot here. <laughs> and, uh, I, so I thought I, for graphic things, I would make Saturn all caps in red. And you can see the, <laughs> the prominence of Saturn in these five charts, right? In the discordant aspects of these five charts. Um, we have uh, here for Mars, for instance, uh, Mars is sesquiquadrate Saturn. Uh, okay. Um, uh, um, and Mars is square to Saturn in this one. Mars is square to Saturn here. Mars is square to Saturn here. Mars is square to Saturn here, right? That's, uh, you won't usually find a string of five charts in a row where Mars is square to Saturn, right? It's not that, that common. So, and, and then, and <laughs> the, in four of the five, uh, in, in these charts, right? Uh, Mars uh, here, uh, Neptune angular in the fourth moon and Mercury square Mars Neptune opposite Saturn okay here Neptune opposite Saturn okay <laughs> Neptune uh, square Saturn right you see this again and again and here for Pluto there uh, there uh, there Pluto was was a parallel Saturn here there was a trine Saturn here they weren't all discordant parallel Saturn there and uh, opposite Saturn there this is uh, just, um, so anyway, for future research, I think we might look for the role of Saturn <laughs> in, uh, the role of Saturn in Lyme disease, and we might even explore it as a constant, like to see if Saturn is prominent and, and with discordant aspects. But I think it's uh, common, this one malefic planet is tied closely to all three of the uh, significators here that are showing up for, uh, for Lyme disease, okay. I think I could close that. There we go. All right. Okay, maybe I can do this. Okay. Uh, this is, okay. we have a chart here of somebody with Lyme disease. Let's see what we can remember here. And this, we're thinking of Mars. So Mars is conjunct the sun and the moon. And square Saturn, uh, square Neptune. Wow, all right. Neptune is square the sun and the moon. Sextile Mercury, square Mars, opposite Saturn, right? Pluto is conjunct Mercury, opposite the midheaven, okay? Sextile the ascendant, this is the aerial into the ascendant. Trine Saturn and semi-sextile Mars. So uh, we can see the chart if we want. And... Uh, this is the, the sun and the moon. Mars here is conjunct the sun and the moon. Rather inflammatory. Okay. And uh, what else did we say about that? Nope. Okay. I, my, uh, I'm losing control of my, of my system here. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, Pluto is the one I'm interested in here. It's conjunct Mercury, opposite the midheaven, uh, sextile the ascendant, trans Saturn, uh, Pluto. Yeah, it's conjunct Mercury, and they're both opposite the midheaven. Okay. Uh, we do have, this is the connection to Saturn. Saturn is very prominent. If we were looking at Saturn, you'd say Saturn's prominent in this chart being over here like this, uh, so high. And then uh, uh, Saturn uh, in this, if we're looking at Saturn and Neptune, if we were looking at Saturn and Neptune as constants, you can see they're opposite there with uh, probably a, a T square there to Mars. Yeah, for both of those. That's, that's- uh, It makes sense that the Saturn is uh, showing up so much. I mean, you. You could almost call it a constant. I mean, it is a chronic, Lyme is chronic disease in most cases. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So, yeah. so it makes perfect sense to see the Saturn. It, maybe that should even be like a usual constant. 
<laughs> I think, well, that's what I was thinking. Uh, there's uh, one of the things you don't quite get the drama of it and you, until you see it's not only a constant, it's aspecting all the other constants, right? <laughs> That, that doesn't always happen. You can have a constant over here and a constant over there and you can get the disease, but when this is so profoundly tied in there like that. And uh, when I go re rework that data, I'll add some more charts and then I'll put a column in there for Saturn as far as for prominence uh, and, and there. But um, that's um, that, that really fits the chronic nature of the disease. Um, you know the, yeah. There is also having to do with, with uh, Neptune. I'd like to say there is a huge amount of fraud around in the natural medicine world around Lyme disease, uh, fraudulent diagnoses. Um, we get them uh, in, our, in our, our, our clinics. We get a, a stream of them, uh, one a month or six a year or something like that. People, they were diagnosed with Lyme disease and told to take this supplement and that supplement and all of that. Well, how were you diagnosed? And they said, well, they, he used some kind of a machine that <laughs> assessed my organs and uh, told me I had Lyme disease, right? And then even you, you can get a blood test for Lyme disease, but the actual blood test for Lyme disease, you need two different kinds of tests that are that to confirm. Right, because the tests have false positives, right? And they'll say you have Lyme when you don't. And so now here's somebody, you know, what they have is a dairy allergy or celiac disease and sleep debt and an omega-3 fatty acid deficiency, right? And uh, chronic, um, just uh, chronic stress, right? And their system is breaking down. And they need to find the roots of that, usually in their lifestyle, and is not going to be in some invisible imaginary infectious agent, right? So, um, and then people come to believe, oh, I believe, oh, I have Lyme now. Okay, now you, now it becomes part of your identity, right? And then um, we are, we have to deal with that. We know they're misdiagnoses, some of them, and uh, we, but the people believes it very strongly. So we say, okay, well, let's make you as healthy as you can uh, and see if you can keep, keep the Lyme at bay that way. <laughs> and uh, usually we, we remove the cause of the problem. They go, oh, well, great. I'm keeping the Lyme at bay now, you know, and, uh, but they, they actually didn't have that. But certain areas in, in medicine, and this has to do with pharmaceutical medicine, but alternative medicine, the, the, the fraud around can, uh, fake cancer cures, is is incredible and and around it's like part of the milieu of cancer is fake promises of cures and uh, the same way with uh, Lyme disease it's vague diagnoses and then uh, things so uh, I'm not going to talk a lot more about Lyme disease the the organism itself is it's it's tick borne often that people get a tick bite they get Lyme disease they'll often get a couple of other bugs in there also. Right, so you don't uh, you don't um, always know it, but the disease itself is a very adaptable organism. It's called Borrelia burgdorferi, and uh, it will it can do all kinds of things. The immune system it'll be floating around like this. The immune system attacks it and it goes up, turns into a little cyst, and the immune system can't do anything to it. And then when the immune system quiets down, it pops up and becomes a bacteria again, <laughs> and. Uh, it also evolves in your system very rapidly. So they say if, you, uh, if you've had it for about 60 days, you've evolved your own personal bacterial, <laughs> your own personal Petri dish that can be resistant to your own immunity. Um, in, in most cases, antibiotics, the course of antibiotics will uh, eradicate it. Um, so people will say, oh, I, it didn't eradicate it. I, I, um, I still have my symptoms, uh, but that doesn't mean you still have the bacteria. You can have the symptoms because you're living in the 20th century and, and you have a bad diet and um, I, no, no judgment there. You have a depleted diet. The 20th century diet is not a nourishing diet for most people. So uh, people get chronic problems with that. Anyway, there uh, we'll, we'll be looking at Saturn as a constant there and taking note of that going into the future. Um, I think... I, I have another uh, condition here is an abscess. An abscess is where uh, you have an infection somewhere at some place in your body, an infection. And then uh, the infection, the body can't get off it. And it's kind of walled off. And so it makes this little pocket of pus 
the, and then this this bacteria they they have this uh, bacterial biofilm fills up this cavity in there you have pus and then that generates blood poisoning throughout the whole body um, people can have an abscess tooth and that abscess tooth can cause you blood poisoning in your whole system and uh, so uh, here are the charts here I, I got seven charts and they were um uh, they had various different abscesses. One of them had a lung abscess, another one had an intestinal abscess, and, and so on. So, but uh, the uh, constants uh, in our lessons are Mars and Neptune, and uh, I examined it for Pluto as well. And the uh, the seven charts were examined of patients with abscess causing blood poisoning. The constants were Mars, Neptune, and Pluto. Um, each of those constants was prominent in the natal chart and received discordant aspects and was acted by progression at the time of illness or death. Um, uh, and uh, we're, we're going to look at a chart and I'm going to uh, take one thing. What's up? Uh, just wondering what you're missing for dinner. There's a blue pot with a, a chicken in it in the oven that can come out now. Ah. Yeah. Okay. And, and there are cooked potatoes in the refrigerator that can be made into smashed potatoes. Okay. Sorry, my daughter. There you go. Uh, this is uh, the chart here is, uh, okay, I have this chart, but let me, let me just go through the thing. It has a lung abscess. He got pneumonia. And then the pneumonia for an abscess in the lung, and then that uh, poisoned his body. I don't remember whether he survived or not. Um, here, uh, the as we would expect, uh, you know, Mars is prominent. It's conjunct the sun, uh, and uh, that that gives prominence right there all by itself. Uh, but here, uh, looking at our constants, it's it's, it's square to Neptune, Mars square to Neptune. I know this is a. It's a, a, a very a, a difficult aspect. Um, the progressed ascendant was sextile Mars, progressed Mercury parallel Mars, and parallel Mars, progressed Mars parallel Sun, and, uh, Mer prog and uh, yeah, um, progressed Mercury parallel Jupiter. I don't know why I put that there. Um, okay. Uh, Neptune is powerful, angular. It's in the seventh house, square of the Sun, Sun and Mars and Jupiter, this is very prominent, uh, Neptune, semi-square Pluto, and semi-square Saturn. And uh, uh, this one has, this. I included this for a reason, we might have a little discussion of this. Um, there are no progressions to uh, Neptune except the progressions to itself, right? And this is uh, the progress. This is often, sometimes you'll have this for life, that your uh, slow-moving planets will be conjunct their natal places for the rest of your life. And uh, the, uh, I know in our lessons, uh, uh, Zane says that those count, right? The, the Neptune is acted by progression if it's conjunct its natal place, even if that's there for your whole life. And uh, the, uh, so um, this, I included this for that, and we can... Uh, uh, we, we can think about that or discuss it maybe after class. And here, uh, Pluto is uh, semi-square the sun, and it's in close one degree square to Saturn, semi-square Neptune, you see, and uh, progress Pluto is square to Saturn. You see all, our, all the constants we're examining there are all there uh, fixed with each other. So here, let's look at, uh, let's look at Pluto here. Uh, uh, Pluto is... Uh, is, is uh, what does they say? Pluto semi-square the sun. Oh, Pluto is square Saturn. Look at the, the Saturn, it's uh, one degree, right? Eight, you, so you progress Pluto, Pluto, and then Saturn there also. That, that's, that's very powerful. That closeness in an aspect adds prominence, according to our lessons, like two planets it, within one degree, um, especially if they're tied into anything else here. Um, so um, here, let's look again here. Pluto, semi-square the sun, one degree square to Saturn. And then here, uh, semi-square. Uh, and then, so this is also semi-square to Neptune down here. Okay. Yes. 
yeah, Pluto semi-square Neptune and square to Saturn. I don't think this quite because, well, that, that might be sesquiquadrate there, Neptune. Let's see. Yeah, sesquiquadrate to Saturn. So this is one of our, that we spoke about before, our aggravated con configurations. This is a square and a very strong one at that. And then, uh, but then Neptune is semi, semi square to one end and Cisco quadrate to the other end. And that's a, that's a, an aggravated discordant um, uh, condition there. And these are our three, these are uh, Pluto, Neptune and Mars we were looking at. And uh, here we're looking at there's Saturn there. Then the Pluto, uh, Pluto has an aerial into the ascendant. Uh, it's as a trying the Pluto trying the ascendant there, and uh, that is my uh, presentation uh, for today. Next week, we're going to continue more with Pluto, and uh, we might look at Pluto's uh, some of its uh, uh, thing having to do with um, autoimmune diseases, and uh, also with this spirit obsession. I do have one one. Uh, one, one case of a, of a patient uh, who was actually uh, well, she became a healer. She became quite, quite harmful to people. Whatever dark forces got a hold of her, she just injured one person after another after another uh, using psychic force. So I'm going to, we're going to look at the Pluto in her chart. And uh, here is, uh, okay. And uh, also, I'm going to complete my research on paralysis. We asked that question. Uh, why Uranus and paralysis? And I think Neptune's probably involved in paralysis. And we're going to also look at the possibility of Pluto being involved in paralysis. And I have that completed for next week. Um, and uh, with that, I'm, uh, I am.